Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Conversation with Freedom. You know, on this show, I host different people from all walks of life to share their stories and life and life experiences. Today, I have a very special guest. She's so amazing. I just met her recently. She's from she's from Australia. Monica, welcome to my podcast. Thank you, Freedom. Thank you for the warm welcome. And congratulations for the work that you're doing. I am really amazed at uh, the support that you give to other people. And I guess uh, showing what other people does uh, can inspire them to become better. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I, accept to, uh, I accepted to record this interview. And, um, and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for choosing me as a uh, for this interview. You're welcome. Um, for those people who don't know who Monica is, please give us a little bit of background of who you are and yeah, everything that we need to know about you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Monica Malaga. I'm a public speaking coach. So my business is called Find Your Voice. And I'm effective transformation uh, public speaking coach. Why I chose to do this um, niche in coaching, because you can be a coach in any niche, is because uh, I find that um, everyone has a story. Yeah. Everyone has uh, something that happened to, to us during our lifetime, maybe our childhood or our upbringing. Um, maybe in our culture or in our society. Oh. And sometimes we don't know how to convey that message. So um, it happened to me as well. I became very, very shy. And I wasn't able to convey even a message in a meeting room when I was working in, a, in the corporate world. So I decided to do something about it. I study a lot. I did a lot of workshops and I found my voice my internal voice because sometimes we can speak superficially yeah. about any topic you know but yeah. uh, so, but that doesn't mean that we're sharing who we are mm. and that doesn't mean also that you that you need to share everything that you are you have to put your boundaries as well what you want to share yeah. but i do believe that everyone has a story to share and from that story we can all learn we can all heal because mm -hmm. then maybe we can relate to that story. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons that because I overcome, overcome that fear of saying who I am and saying my stories, then I decided I can help with this to other people to find their internal voices yeah. and convey their stories in a structured way mm -hmm. and then be able to communicate, to be better communicators. So um, that's basically what I do with my business. I am um, here in Australia 15 years already living here. Okay. Originally, I come from Latin America. So I speak uh, other language, other, other native language. English is my non-native um, second language. Okay. And, um, yeah, and perhaps that's one of the reasons why you, you become shy when you when it's not your own language, that yeah, you have to yeah. express another language, but language that is not yours. But there are several reasons why you can become yeah. blocked. Why? Sorry, sorry to catch you. Why did you decide yeah. to move from America to, to, to Australia? What made you to move? Oh, from South America. I um, That's a long story, but in a nutshell, um, one of the reasons is because I wanted to study my master's degree. Okay. So I came to study a master's here and it was in another language, different than mine. It was in another country, in a different society. Yeah. Everything was different. Okay. I thought to come for a couple of years, but uh, I came with my husband and my two kids and they really loved it here. So yes. then we decided to stay and then um, we found the way to be productive in Australia, to be recognized uh, with the permanent residency, and then we became citizens. So it was a long journey, 
yeah. were the ups and downs, mm -hmm. but um, we decided to tackle all the challenges and we worked through that and we made it possible. That's, yeah. great. That's great. That's so amazing. Do you have any advice for someone who's struggling to find their voice? Who's, who doesn't feel like she doesn't belong or he doesn't belong? Any advice for, for that person who's going through that? Yes, definitely. Finding your voice and being being, being confident and yes. speaking out, it's not like turning on and off the light, right? It's not yes. that easy because mm -hmm. you have grown up perhaps with that fear or people might have told you that it's not right to express yourself. Maybe since kids, we have seen that it is okay for the adults to talk, yeah. but not for the kids, for the children. We And it's a way of respecting the adults. Yeah. And it becomes, it becomes wired in your head. So some of the studies are um, that I did are also um, on NLP, okay. um, neuro-linguistic neuro programming. And it says that when we are born yeah. from uh, zero to seven years, we learn the belief systems that are going to be with us um, for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very hard when it's hardwired in your brain yeah. that um, it's not safe to speak. Sometimes some trauma happen as well to so many people that prevent you to feel safe to speak. Mm -hmm. So that um, that becomes the fear, the internal fear. And it says that in the Western world, okay. the greatest fear is public speaking. Yeah. And it, yeah, people are have more fear to public speaking <laughs> than, than death. <laughs> that, that's what research shows. So yeah. um, breaking that, it's a process. It's a mm -hmm. process that you have to be very conscious about it. First, you have to want to change that okay. because you realize that maybe it's not helping you, it's not serving you. Mm -hmm. um, you, need to be, you, you need to function a little bit better on that, either for school, for work. Those yes. soft skills are going to help you, definitely. So when you realize that and you want to change it, that's the first thing. And then from there, you get the commitment to change. Yeah. And um, noticing what perhaps triggers that fear when you are in a different place that it's not your day-to-day -day one, maybe yeah. with uh, strange people, but you start building those skills day-to-day, -day. like um, it's like breaking barriers and unblocking the internal blocks, just practicing, you know, in front of the mirror or with the people who are friendly to you and say, you know, I want to practice my speech, my speech and find mm -hmm. any topic, any topic that maybe you're comfortable with. Yeah. Maybe it could be dancing, maybe it could be singing or even how do you brush your teeth. It's, it, it could be an easy topic. Oh. And then when you, yeah, when you familiarize with those type of um, topics that are easy, then you can stretch it a little bit to harder topics. Okay. And that gives you the muscle and the recon reconnection of your neurons. Yeah. Um, I always say that um, if someone asks you to lift a hundred kilograms in weights, yeah. you're not gonna be able to do it overnight because you don't have the muscle. Right? True, true. But, yeah, but if you start building that from uh, five kilos, then 10 kilos, 20, 30, you, sooner or later, you're going to get to 50, 60, yes. 70, and 100. Yes. And yes. it's going to yes. take you that time to practice and to build that muscle. Yeah. And you only get that with the acknowledgement that you need to build that muscle mm. and the commitment that you're going to exercise. Yeah. So public speaking is exactly like that. You have to have that commitment First, that acknowledgement, then the commitment, and then put it in practice, exercises. There are so many um, tips and skills that you can practice, but the first thing is acknowledge what is blocking you there. You know? Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's so, that's so true. And thank you for, for, for sharing that. You've mentioned something important earlier. You said you are a mother. 
how do you how do you balance work and life balance how do you navigate between the two how do I, do i know how to balance how, life a life and work, life and work balance. Life and work, yes. How do you yeah. go around it? I think it's a forever learning process. I don't know anyone who can say, yeah, I have the perfect balance between life and, and, and work. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, work can take priority. Mm. And sometimes family and, and your day-to-day -day life can take priority as well. Um, for example, if you have a, a family member who is sick, or maybe it's a birthday or an important occasion, then you have to prioritize that. And um, I guess the best advice for me would be if you want to find the balance, you have to be flexible. Mm. You know? So work majority of the time that you need to work your hours to yeah. get to one objective. But if you need to be flexible to change that and make it up later, then you do that. Because that way you can go to commitments, personal commitments, family commitments, and then make it up. The good thing today that it, we work from home and we have that flex, flexibility yeah, for yeah. people who work from home, you know? Yeah. So then that gives you more um, uh, allowance to go to your personal commitments, but at the same time to balance with your work commitments as well. Okay, that's that, that's great. What are some of the most important lessons that you've learned and the challenges that you've come across that you would like to share with us? In the most in, important lessons in life, <laughs> in life, in, in, in life. life in general. Yeah. yeah, I um, I could speak for hours, um, <laughs> freedom about there's so many lessons that I have learned in life. Yeah, but I guess then, what I would like to share with people um, and for your audience yeah. is that um, I learned that um, nothing in life is perfect, or nothing in life is completely good or completely bad. Wow. And also that applies, yeah, and also that applies for people, in my view. Yeah. Um, I'm not the type of person to believe that someone is totally a bad person or this is a totally or complete good person. Okay. And we as people have our virtues, but we have our very big flaws or defects yeah. or challenges, you know? Yeah. So... Um, if we focus in something that someone is doing bad, instead of focusing on the things that this person has as virtues or valuable things, yeah. we're going to always diminish that human being. And perhaps we can reject people from, from society in that yeah. way. <laughs> Same with anything. If something happens to you, something, for example, bad can happen. Um, if you focus on that, you're not going to see maybe the silver lining, the mm. good thing of that happening. And yeah. nothing is complete in life. You're not going to get 100% or, or the win-win situation. Oh. With, yeah. So my biggest lesson in life is that whatever decision you take, uh, there's always good and always something bad with that decision. But if you focus on the positive that you're going to get and you prioritize what is good for you. Yeah. Because taking one decision can be good for you, but bad for the other person. True. But what is good for you, take that decision. It will come with the goods, but it will come with the bads. And you focus on the good things because then you're going to continue forward. If not, the negativity is going to drill you. Yeah. Monica, we... That's so amazing, and that brings me to this question. You know, we we so surrounded by a lot of negativity on social media, on yeah. every, every everywhere you you, you live, wherever on the internet or whatever. Um, how do one stay in their lane? How do you stay in your lane and be like, no, I really need? How do you focus on the positivity only while there are a lot of negativity? the world how do one go around it oh wow that's an interesting question because um as anyone when i was growing up i learned to give power um to the outside world yeah so i gave power to 
people that you who love your parents, your family, your the society, your friends, school, yeah. and then television, yeah. uh, social media these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you give the power for them to influence you as a whole or one by one, yeah. then your your decisions and your life is going to depend on how these people think about you, Ooh. how they judge you, yeah. or how television is influencing everyone else, and then yeah. you have to be part of that. Yeah. And then alienate yourself. So it took me a lot of introspection to learn that the power to filter what is good for me or what is bad for me. And it's totally different for each person, you know, yes. but listen to myself and say, I'm going to filter this because it's not good. It, it doesn't make me any good. It doesn't yeah. serve me. Then just to take it away. But it's, it's, a, it's a very, very intense exercise. It's like you have to rewire yourself. And for me, it was like being born again. Oh. And, and what I, why I, this, I, do, I say this because um, the example that I was giving you, when you were born, from zero to seven years is the most important time of your life where you are, are um, educated and you are taught about all things that your family, society, school want to mm -hmm. teach you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're born, you don't know what religion you're going to have. You don't know what soccer team you're going yeah. to cheer up for. Yeah. You don't know what language you're going to speak. Yeah. You don't know so many things. Right, you are just pure, yeah, and you're a bundle of joy. You yeah. perhaps have influence from and uh, the nine months of pregnancy of your mother, and and research has shown that there's influence in the mood, how she, how happy, how much adrenaline or cortisol she has gone through during the pregnancy. Oh. But basically, when you're born, you yeah. are pure, right. Yeah. And when you, you, you start learning like, like a sponge, because it's like a sponge that doesn't have any knowledge and it's so dependable from parents or the primary uh, taker, caretaker, yeah. that you just believe that the person is going to help you to be fed, to, be change, uh, to change your diapers, mm -hmm. to give you uh, clothes to not to feel cold. Yeah. And then you rely and trust that person. And because that person is giving you and um, your primary needs satisfied, then you trust that that person is also giving you good advice, oh. telling you this religion is the best one, this language you're going you're gonna to learn, this is the name that we're going to give you. And you don't have choice. Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. 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 So... Um, so it, that's why when you grow up it's so important the influence that you have in your first years because mm -hmm. you're creating a human being and you're creating the future yeah but anyway um every society has their own um problems yeah. and challenges mm -hmm. um, and good things as well right but when you are an adult it's your responsibility to take the hands of and the will of your life and say what has served me uh, and what is good to continue to go on yeah. and what is not good you have to disregard that disregard and your be, willpower will be tested okay. because people will tell you you're not doing right the right uh, thing uh, this is not good for you yeah <laughs> and and even peer pressure as well you know or if this is not cool if you want to belong to a group then you should do this and even sometimes bad things that's why maybe a teenagers get into trouble because they want to be long. Mm -hmm. um, but it will take you a lot of introspection to find, you know, what is the issue that is making you to do these things. Yeah. If it's not certain, you just filter it out. Um, for example, I don't, I don't know if it, this is good or not. For me, it works. I don't watch news. Wow. I don't watch it at all. Why? And I, I have learned from my mentors that, that uh, whatever is in the news or uh, even the propaganda that comes with the news, okay. it has a damaging effect in your um, in many of your emotions because news are already overcharged with the negativity. No, yeah. this is happening bad in the world. This is and 
they are so ready the news and this is not criticizing anyone who's doing and their uh their work because they are very very good presenters that are very um uh not biased but the majority in my opinion are biased so they present news in a very biased way you know mm -hmm. to get a reaction from you and it's interesting also because uh, research has shown that the propaganda the advertisement after depressing news, the yeah. very depressing news, um, then they uh, they take you to um, to propaganda to buy something. Because <laughs> you want to want to compensate that oh, feeling of depression. I, yeah, you need you need dopamine, serotonin, you know. But this is a whole level of uh, another level of um, uh, of knowledge. Yeah. But then um, because you need to compensate that then you say, oh, I'm going to buy that because I need to feel good now. I oh. feel so bad with the pressing news that I, yeah. I need to buy that. And then it starts to, you know, buying, buying, getting, consuming things, yes. you know, because you want to feel good. So, 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 so I'll, okay, okay, sorry. sorry. How do you stay informed if you don't watch the news? How do you stay informed? Well, sooner or later, someone is going to tell you. Wow. Sooner or later, <laughs> someone is going to tell you. And sooner or later, maybe you're going to get um, the headlines in your phone when you're checking your social media or yeah, something. Yeah, the headlines yeah. are going to come. But yeah. in my experience, it's better to read the headlines yeah. and what is important, because maybe a new regulation from the government, whatever, that it's important to be informed. Yeah. But it doesn't have the emotional charge of the news presenter mm -hmm. that maybe that one is yeah. the, yeah. the negativity already there, you know, and it's not going to have the propaganda either. Yeah. So, mm. I, I, I get it. I understand. And that's so, 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 so powerful. And that brings Thank me you. to, and that brings me to this question. How do you deal with rejection? and criticism how how do i deal with how criticism you, how, yes how do you deal with rejection and criticism oh okay um i guess that um i just don't care, you wow. know? I don't care. <laughs> how come how come you don't care <laughs> well look it is always important to be accepted. And that's one of the most important human um, emotional needs yeah. for a human being. Yes. Accepted and loved, right? Mm. So we all want to be loved and accepted. That's natural. Mm. But the first person who needs to be, and who needs to love you yeah. and who needs to accept you, guess, guess who, who's that person? Me. Yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's the most important thing. So if you love yourself, you accept yourself, then you know what are your boundaries and what you're willing to accept or not from other people. Yeah. Then you start surrounding with people who are in the same level of energy, yes. who are going to align with you. Yeah. And if you feel some rejection or negativity, that is okay. You don't need to fight that back because you don't need to be liked by ed by, by everyone, right? Mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're gonna have people who maybe, I don't know, my face or my my voice are not gonna, they're gonna, not gonna like it, I don't know. Yeah. But I don't need that people in my life. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I do like people who maybe they like my style, what I teach, my work, even my sense, sense of humor or my way of dancing yeah, yeah. and if they are with me and you reciprocate right true but in order to get that love you also have to give it true. and if the first important thing to give is to also accept accept people just like they are uh, you know, i don't want perfect people in my life i i just love what it comes to me but i feel that if i see a person that is negative or their values are different than mine yeah. and not because my values are better or, or or you know are here and they're they're here no it's because i give value to some things that are important for me 
yeah. and this person doesn't give the importance to those values, I don't need that person in my life. I just don't need it. But I guess also it's a matter of when you're growing up, you learn those things. When you're younger, it's very, very easy to um, succumb to the peer pressure. Mm -hmm. And just because you want love and acceptance and you, you just um, cry for, for that and you cry also when you're rejected yeah. and you're criticized. But um, it's a learning experience during life that you learn that you don't need people who criticize you. And if they want to criticize you, it's their business. You yeah. cannot control that, right? There's no control. Imagine if we could control everyone else, everyone else's feelings about you. <laughs> that would be so good. You need a control remote and say, okay, I want this person to like me, this other one to like me, this other one. And you control everything. Um, and that's not real, right? Yes, that's so, 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 so true. <laughs> uh, uh, how do you define success, Monica? Okay, I guess success um, for me is defined, and I have changed my definition of success a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I grew up with the definition of success that everyone, on the majority of people has, yeah. that you should have a career and then you have um, a house, a car, friends, money in the bank, and those material things that surround you. Yeah. But um, I learned that the success is not that. Okay. That just proves that maybe you are attached with material things that you're not going to take with you when you die. And oh. you could die anytime. Right? Oh. So <sighs> If you if you die tomorrow, um, what are you gonna take with you? Are you gonna take those things that you maybe made a lot of effort to get, or you go, or you want to die with the love that the people you 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 touch their hearts, you made a difference for them. Yeah. Um, so when I learned this, those things, my values change, and and I was able to redefine my values. Yeah. What is important for me. And, and since then, it's a whole change. It's a whole change that my personal development um, move to another dimension. Mm -hmm. And success for me is the smiles that I create when I'm surrounded with people, what my work makes a difference to, yeah. and that I can see people flourishing, mm -hmm. finding their voices. Yeah. And, and, and even the the concept of happiness because happiness is just what you feel how happy you are in that moment yeah. because your yeah. body is full of good um, uh, well-being hormones and not anything or any, any other thing you know when i get my house i'll be happy when i get that career i'll be happy when i get that husband or that wife or my kids finish school i'll be happy yeah. And it's always that you can strive for that and you're never going to be happy. Oh. You can be happy with what you have and who, with who you are. Mm. That's the definition of success for me. <laughs> and failure? Oh. Uh, there's no failure. Oh. There's no failure. Oh. Uh, failure, it's, um, it's a way that humans maybe define mistakes. Yeah. And... And also mistakes for me are just uh, learning opportunities, their experiences. Whatever I have uh, learned in my life, good or bad, has taken me to the place that I'm at the moment. Mm. And, um, and those mistakes or failures happen for a reason. It was just experiences that I was able to learn from and um, something didn't happen in the way that I was expecting, then I calibrate myself, myself and it's feedback. Um, oh, it didn't work that way. Maybe I should try another way in order to get my, my results. And, and from experience, I bless all those challenges, all those experiences when I didn't get my result because I wouldn't be the person who I am today. Do you have any yes. regrets? No. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> and 
because exactly what I was saying, if um if I would regret something, even sometimes I feel sad because maybe I didn't um I didn't uh, make a decision that maybe was the best one. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been, it could have been different, but it's I I changed my perspective in terms that mm -hmm. that took me to learn and then another step for mm -hmm. the person who I am today. If I would have done differently in those opportunities with different outcome, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. You're so, That's you're why. So, you're, so amazing. you're so amazing. Uh, so you are, Fredo. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you have any books recommendation that you would like to, to suggest for people to check them out? Books that they have helped you along the way? Yes. Wow. Well, there are many. There are many. But um, if you want to modify the um, uh, the way that your brain is wired yeah. and start new connections in your brain, I think one of the best books is uh, one from Joy Dispenza, who I um, who I love, and the book it's really good, and it says um, changing the habits of being yourself. Okay. I'll, I'll Which is really good. I will check yeah. it out. I will check it out. <laughs> That's for a start, yeah. Yeah, and then do you have any other one? But there are many other books that I have read that I love all personal development ones. Yeah. For example, um, Unleash the Power Between Yourself from Tony Robbins is another good one. Yeah. And it, it's referred to what I was speaking, you know, you have the power inside of you. Mm -hmm. And um, if you unleash that power, then you take it, the power that you gave to the rest of the people and society. And then you are the one who decides what is going to go into your brain. And the basic principle of this is when you take, a, take an action or that decision, yeah. before that action yeah. comes a feeling. And okay. before that feeling comes a thought. Oh. So it's thought, feeling, and action. That's the, those are the steps. And people don't think about that. They just say, no, I just felt that I wanted to eat chips and they go. Maybe they <laughs> felt that they wanted to punch someone in the face and they did it. But they weren't aware that there was a thought coming in mm -hmm. and that thought went to their feelings, their heart, and they felt like, like going and punch someone or eating some unhealthy food. Okay. But who has the power to allow any ideas to go to your head? Who yeah. has the power? It's yes. only you. Yes. Only you. Only yes. you. So that's when you start filtering. Yeah. And that's a very good, uh, good book that Tony Robbins applies really good. He really applies really good in his workshops and um, and what his webinars and um, he used to do it face to face before COVID. Yeah. And I hope that he restarts doing those because he's such an amazing coach as well. Yeah. Okay, really good. Do you have any upcoming projects that you want us to know about? Yes, yeah. I'm super excited to, to let you know that I'm currently I'm working on um, a program to um, get you from zero or any level of public speaking that you may have yeah. up to the 10 project to help you to become a competent public speaker, competent communicator. That's by the 10 project, I teach you or help you to deliver a 20 keynote, keynote speech. Okay. And yeah, and in each one of the projects, um, I help you to find your voice, unblock the inner blocks that you may have. I help you also to reconnect and those neural connections yeah. uh, from scratch and also to re-engineer your speech with very punching introduction, body of the speech and a very strong conclusion with a takeaway message from the, uh, for your audience. So um, I work in those pillars in my program. And based on this, um, I'm creating my, my workshop that is going to condense this program and give you an overview of this. So in a workshop, you can learn tips here and there, and it's going to be more impactful. So 
watch out that space. I'm working on my workshop. And I also uh, I keep working on my book. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I was about to ask you that. I was about to ask yeah. you that. And I hope that that um, book can inspire people that um, if you went through hardship in your life that we all have gone through, how you can change that into the success that you want for your life. So um, I know there are a lot of books out there that show the stories of people, yeah. but every person has a unique um, lot of experiences that can show others maybe that there is hope that your life cannot be stuck forever. Yeah. And if you have um, experiences that are hard for you at some point, then you can overcome them and then set your goals straight and work towards get them. Oh. Do you have anything? Do you have anything to share with us that I didn't ask? Is there anything that you would like to share with us that maybe I didn't ask? I guess that um, something that I find valuable for every society and every generation is that we have the power to change the society for good. Yeah. Every society that we are functioning or we are developing, yeah. uh, we have the power to be kinder. We have the power to love each other. We mm. have the power to make good and uh, and also we have the power to do bad, oh, yeah. but we we can choose that. No one else can choose that. And um, I wanna share perhaps four principles with you and your audience that might help you to take a decision. Yeah. And um, since I learned them, I wish I could have learned them earlier, but when I learned, learned them, it was my time. Yeah. <laughs> and now that I know them, <laughs> I just like to share them. So when you take a decision, sometimes we're not sure. Sometimes we hesitate and we think, you know, oh, perhaps I shouldn't do this or I don't know what to do. Yeah. So what I guide myself to take any decision is first, um, the first principle is it needs to feel good. Okay. okay? Yeah. So whenever you're going to take a decision, if it feels bad, then don't take it. So listen to your body. Yeah. Because that's the first sign that you're going to get. Uh, okay, maybe my body's telling me that it's not a good idea and then don't do it. Yeah. Okay, so um, the second um, principle is that it has to be good for you. Okay. If it's not good for you, don't, don't do it. Because, for example, it feels good maybe for some people to take drugs. Yeah, maybe they are in a high, you know, yeah. that's what uh, yeah. they, they're feeling euphoric or whatever. But then the second principle is that it's not good for you. Then, then do you disregard that because it's not good for you, even if it feels good, okay? Mm -hmm. So the third principle is that it has to be good for others. Oh. So, for, so it's, really, it's really powerful because sometimes we tend to think like, eh, it's good for me and I don't care about others. Yeah. And yeah. that's not a good, uh, an, an, a good point of view because you shouldn't care a bit about what others think but you should care about others if you're hurting someone if you maybe are crossing boundaries with boundaries with others and a good example would be for example um if your work if the, that uh, that you're doing it feels yeah. good yeah it's, it's good it's good if, if the work is good for you then you should be okay so first and second principle yeah and then your work if your work is good for others if the answer is yes, then continue doing it. Okay. Right? But if, yeah. you, but if your work maybe is too selfish, it's just self-centered, you're not helping anyone with that work, then yeah. you need to question that. Is that good for others? You know, even if it if it is good, if it even if it is, if it feels good, it's good. even if it is good for you, yeah. If it's not good for others, then don't do it. Yeah. Okay. So and then the fourth one that is, you know, the highest level is if it is good for the greater good. Oh, explain that. So when, for example, you take any decision that might feel good, good for you and good for others, 
but at this um, when you test it for the four by the four principle and you're damaging for example the environment mm. even if it's good for others but it's not sustainable it's mm. not environmental friendly yeah um i don't know what example i could say maybe you work in um in, in, in an industry in a um in a fossil fuel industry yeah. so your work feels good you're it's good for really? you because you earn money and then you you're developing your career wherever you're buying your things that you need because money is also important so i'm not saying that it's not important when i yeah. talk about material things and it's also good for others yes because then, you're contributing to your company you could you're contributing to, to your household with an income and yeah. then you maybe are developing your career so that's 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 the three principles. But then those fossil fuels are um, creating waste to the environment that is not going to be regenerated by any means. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a, a community is getting hurt from that. Yeah. So the greater good is affected, yeah. right? Yeah. If we, are all, if we all are mindful about those four principles, do you think that the world wouldn't be a better place if we are mindful that we're not hurting others? We are mindful about the greater good. I think it would be a very, very, very better place. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do I. I do believe that uh, we. Are, and it is hard to be mindful of those, about those mm. things sometimes. Yeah. For convenience, you just take decisions that are easier for you, and you don't think about those things. Mm. But if you try, we'll get there. Yeah. Where can people get hold of you? Uh, how? They can uh, get a hold of me? Yeah, on social media. What's your social handle? Oh, yeah. I'm in Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. So um, Monica Malaga, you find me in LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah. And in, uh, in uh, Instagram. You find me as uh, find your voice coaching. So, um, but if you go to the easiest one is Facebook. I have uh, Monica Malaga Integral Consultant. There yeah. all my pages and my my social media links are there. Yeah. So I'll, con I'll continue soon to explore all the other platforms. I haven't tried TikToks or those things yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, but I'm a I'm available. Yeah. Really just reach out for any question. Happy to help. Okay. This is the last question, and this is a question which I ask almost all my guests. When it is all said and done, Monica, how would you like to be remembered? How would I be how would you like to be remembered when it is called? Remember. Yeah, when, oh, when I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, when you don't know when you're gonna die, your yeah. time when your time is up, your time is up. Yeah. I learned so much about that when my mom passed away um oh, in back in 2020, so not not long ago. And um uh I saw that um in my life. Uh, the better I do for other people, the help that I can, can provide and make a difference, um, I would like to be remembered in that way that um, uh, people were happy to have met, that have met me and, um, and that was good for them. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be so good for me that um, it meant something and maybe that was my my mission to come to this life. Mm, mm, mm. Um, that was my greater mission. So if I I do that, then my mission was fulfilled. That's so amazing. And you're so amazing. Thank you so much you. for your time. So you I, are freedom. I, I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. And I would like to have you again on this podcast. I would like us to continue this conversation. Thank you so much. I really want to acknowledge you yeah. because just by interviewing people and I've been following your other post podcasts just to see the work that you do yeah. and the help that you give to young people who yeah. are going to, through hardship and trouble, 
um, mm. it's a difference that you're making to your community and by taking the message of people and that you have interviewed so far and if my message can get to the just these young people to just have hope mm. and um, a model something that has worked for me or for others then um, you're making a big difference um, freedom so you should tap yourself on the shoulder <laughs> I want to I want to congratulate you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Venita. I truly, truly enjoyed this and I've learned a lot. Awesome. My pleasure. Anytime, whenever you want, we can make another interview with things that we both keep learning because yeah. learning is forever um a forever journey that we're gonna do until we decide to part yeah. to another world. That's true. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>